Okay, we'll get started. We'll uh, uh, have a cool, I think someone else will echo there. I think it might be you, Bob. Yeah, please mute your mics if you're, um, especially if you have a speaker system, because otherwise we get feedback. Yeah, it might be an echo. Okay, do you want to talk about show and tell? Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, we're going to have a show and tell. Maybe there's only going to be two okay, people. That's totally cool. Um, or maybe more people show up. Yeah. Uh, show off your project. When you're not showing off your project, please mute your microphone so we don't get feedback echo problems, because otherwise yeah. we'll have to mute you. It'll be very sad. Uh, okay, so first up, it's up, Bob, Bob. Mr. Nixie. Bob is an actual Nixie, too. He's made Nixie <laughs> of Nixie. Show us your project, Bob. All right, Bob, please unmute your mic, and you can show us your Nixie. Maybe we can't. Maybe he only speaks Nixie. Okay, can you hear me? Hello. Yes. yes. Check, check, one, two, three. Can you hear me now? We can hear you and see you look fantastic, oh. Nixie Clock. Speaks in numbers. I'm actually kind of okay if this is the entire like 30 minute show and tell. Like this is very, like this. this is very relaxing. You're cool to go, Bob. Is it coming up or coming? Okay, up? I've got microphone problems. My okay, uh, we can hear you now though. It's kind of weird. I think he's showing off a Nixie clock you made. It's a beautiful clock. Yeah, it's got the blue. You see how it's blue glowy? Those are yeah. LEDs that you put in it, like contrast. That's not yeah. that's not a Nixie thing. That's like an LED thing. And very, it's got milliseconds. It's very Blade Runner. Yeah. He's showing off the LEDs. Yeah, thing. we can narrate this. This is cool. Like, so he wait. He showed up already once. He he does open he source did, hardware yeah. and like it's an Arduino drivers. shield or something. Yeah. And then there's some sort of adapter with a real-time clock or something. There's a lot of drivers on there. You have to be careful because Nixie's run at like 200 volts, so you have to watch out that you don't zap your electronics with them. Yeah. Or yourself. I once got zapped by the, the Nixie. Nixie. Yeah. Ooh. yeah it's About 180 volts. 180 okay, volts. Okay, yeah, your, your microphone is back now, Bob. It keeps cu cutting out and, and coming back in. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Oh. Wait. He's gone. Okay. We can hear you now. Okay. One, two, three. Yes. Yes, we can hear you. I hope you can hear me. I'll just keep talking or showing stuff off. All right. So anyway, so this is a Nixie shield. So this goes on an Arduino, and it'll drive up to six tubes. And there's a number of different uh, off-board tubes that it'll drive. So there'll be larger tubes coming, and. Uh, then I've got also a uh, Menta, and oh, I got that oh, wow. from uh, 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 Maker uh, Store uh, last week, and um, yeah. Maker Shit. And uh, I'm going to uh, do something with a, uh, it's going to involve a foot switch, and it's also going to involve a, uh, some uh, read relays, and uh, it's going to solve a problem I have on the bench here. Well, obviously, I do a lot, a lot of uh, service mount rework, and uh, I need something to uh, um, start up my soldering higher station and set it to the right temperature. And, um, also, I was thinking that I can run my uh, uh, wok with this because I want to be able to just start up the wok and set it to a temperature. So there's a couple of general applications involving um, uh, foot switches and read relays, and probably I need one of those. Um, continuously uh, rotating RC and then I'll be set. But anyway, I want to commend you guys for this thing and uh, this was brilliant uh, because uh, it's anytime anybody does electronics and I'm uh, the kind of guy of course would just uh, design a PC board and uh, just do it from with stone knives and bearskins. Um, <laughs> but always we're always faced with enclosure issues and uh, by solving the enclosure issue um, from the get-go was just a brilliant thing because I saw this thing and I said, oh, all right, all I have to do is buy one of these things, solder it together, and um, make, you know, get the nibbler out, and um, I'm all set. Yeah. This is great stuff. Great the enclosure stuff. problem is, is a problem, and this is why. So, it's actually anyway. when I did the tutorial, 
the thing I said in the, like, the first sentence was like, we're going to pick the enclosure first yeah. and then crowd the electronics in it later yeah. because then to never find the enclosure to match your electronics. Yeah. Hey, Bob, can you show the um, Nixie clock that you had in the beginning? That's when your sound cut out. Um, maybe you could just show that real quick again. Back here, this. Yeah. yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, those are teeny little tubes. Okay, let me let me shut out the lights here. Can you hear me? Yeah. It says I can. You can hear me. I'm blinded. And uh, okay. Yeah, Nixie tube clocks are a little tough to get uh, right under the light. You know, you just have to decide the right amount of light. Um, yeah. Yeah, we got we had plenty of footage before, and you, and that, you do have. But like, they do. Well, so that's not the shield. That's something different. Yes, this is an Atmega 328. Um, it uses the same Arduino uh, software, uh, a DAB bootloader. Um, but uh, I did this uh, just before I got on into Arduino, and um, but I just decided that was the way to go. The dedicated Nixie tube driver board. That's great. Excellent, excellent stuff. Okay, cool. So, well, thank you, Bob, yeah. and continue so, but to stop by the show if you work on these. Also coming up is the shield. There'll be a yeah. uh, Nixie tube shield coming along here too, which will then drive bigger tubes. Yeah, up to six. The shield, and this one will drive up to eight. Mm. So that's great. Great stuff. Thank anyway. you, Bob. Alright, thanks. Please mute your mic and we'll move on to the next person. Okay, I'm going to skip over to Scott and then we'll go to Jeremy and then Andy, if that's okay. Okay, Scott. Scott, choice your project. Hi, Scott. Hello. Okay. Let's see your project. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. A little bit of a delay tonight. Okay, so, uh, Hi, can you hear? Yep. Yes. Yeah, we put this on the blog. This is a really cool project. Yeah. Oh, this is a little... Okay. Painting. So can you see, this is a scoring wheel from a pinball machine. And, uh, right, so, yeah, I saw uh, an article in Elector where someone uh, over in Europe actually had taken this and made a, a thermometer for their pool. And that got me to look for a few on eBay. And so these are some... Probably a 1970s machine. Yeah. And you can see it's a, a real display. It's got a solenoid uh, right, right around here. This is actually one of the ones that I have. So uh, as you uh, pull it down, and uh, the reel will, will rotate. Okay. Yeah. So let me take you to the, the actual machine. So uh, let's put the uh, reel. So you can see it here. Um, so what I did is I took a permaproda and uh, connected it up so that I've got four sets of terminal blocks here going to the reels, and one bringing 18 volts from the uh, uh, the power supply from the printer. Yep. And uh, I've got the relays here, and then I've got a step down so I can take the 18 to uh, 5 volts uh, across the bottom of the about bottom of the board. So let's uh, actually try to do a demo here. See how this works. Uh, yeah, let demo a uh, wireless interface to it, and I'll show you the interface at the same time. So if I bring that in, you can see oh. that I've got a a website here, so that I can basically uh, enter a new number for it. You can see the the real. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> so we can set various settings on it. And it's, and it's really cool because uh, there's the, uh, you basically get the audio response of, of the reels too, which is really yeah. uh, pretty fun. And so I'm hoping to turn it into maybe a, a website hit counter. I actually wanted a fourth reel so I could use it for a clock, uh, but uh, I've got to clean up another three before I get some more reels. Yeah. But uh, one of the nice things is about, uh, you know, if I use the, uh, the patch shield like I, I did here, you can see I've... Uh, uh, actually set up the Arduino stack. So I've got the patch shield on top, 
even yeah. on the bottom, I've got a fly shield in the middle. And of course, I could add more boards by using the hatch shield to connect to additional relay boards if I want to drive that. So it worked out pretty nice, and uh, it's it's nice that even though it takes a fair amount of energy to activate the solenoid, I can multiplex uh, between them just fine. Okay. Oh, this is great. This is an excellent project. Let us know if you uh, and um, send us a link as you um, continue to work on this thing. Okay. Sure. All right, thank you so much, Scott. Cool. All right, Jeremy, hello, how are you? Good, guys, how are you doing? Good. Good, so um, I want to say, uh, again, I, I second what Bob said, if I look at my camera up here, I want to second what Bob said about the, um, about the enclosure problem because that's my biggest problem by far. Second to, I'm almost done with this project, but I just thought of something else cool, and let's start building this and robbing parts off of this one. So uh, yeah, hats off to that. that that's a really good very cool thing to do. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm working on sourcing enclosures for Adafruit that span a range. I, cause I'm very picky about enclosures, and I want to get enclosures. So I'm working for plastic waterproof enclosures that are easy to machine and are yeah. translucent or transparent. And so, like, I had some samples coming in um, probably after Maker Faire, and, and hopefully those will work out, and we'll have, like, a nice big range of enclosures that you know, are, are both transparent, waterproof, and machinable, because I think that's kind of the, the three most important things. I mean, like, it's hard to have a perfect enclosure. Yeah. But, uh, I think we're approaching this stage in the maker movement where we need more than just, like, the Arduino or, like, even the Raspberry Pi is shipping. The first thing people said, oh, we're, you know, I want an enclosure because all this stuff is starting to be displayed in homes yeah. and, and just used more often. So I think just the, the dev board aesthetic is kind of on its way out, and I think people are looking for um, good enclosures. Yeah, so. that's why I'm good. also trying to get like panel mount stuff and waterproof stuff. And, but it's tough. It's, yeah. it's like there's, you know, there's thousands and thousands of connectors and yeah. whatever. It, it'll be a neat intersection to see if we can get 3D printers that are really good and cheap with this desire for enclosures. So anyway. Yeah, yeah. 3D printers are definitely a solution to this problem. But you only make like one. It takes like eight hours. Yeah, you're like overnight. You made one enclosure, so yeah. it's good for a one-off. All right, Jeremy. So, 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 so uh, your latest. I know we just posted your video. Thank you for doing that video about the um, Dorkbot PDX, and people really liked it. Oh yeah, sure. Um, this uh, I built something to measure uh, how bright things are based off the. Um, I'm gonna try to get this on my camera here. Uh, yeah. the, the TSL 2561. So basically, it's just a light meter, and um, I don't know if you can see that. That's a nice case. You've got like a display and a box and handheld. Yeah, basically, remember that enclosure thing? This is a good old Radio Shack plastic box here, but yeah. um, I, I built this guy, and it measures uh, everything uh, that the that the chip measures, and then it has a menu system built in it, and then it, uh, you can change the gain and the timing and adjust the backlight, and, and it'll keep the maximum and minimum for... Um, infrared, visible, full, and how many lux. Um, it saves it all EEPROM. Also adjustable is the battery type for alkaline, nickel metal hydride, or LiPo. There's a little battery icon that's active in the, up in the corner there. And so basically it's just a, a light meter because um, I wanted to measure how bright some LEDs were. And I had, I got, had this like mess on a breadboard. I actually did this like two months ago, but the enclosure thing. I, it's been sitting on a breadboard in a drawer for a few months because I haven't finished it up. So. I wanted it like semi presentable before showing it, so I'll do a post on it. Yeah, please do. Yeah, it's nice and pleasant. That's all. All right, and then we're going to go to Andy, and then we'll get ready for asking it here. All right, Andy. Your workshop is expanding still. Yeah. Hey, um, I just wanted to go over a couple of. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? Okay, um, good. Hey, I wanted to go over a couple of things that I've been um, looking into for some new projects, and um, here's one right now. Let me go to my overhead. Um, you know, got you guys um, carry that um, power, the power tail? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is the zero crossing tail and also the solid state relay that that, that they make as well. Mm. And I'm, I'm about halfway there on the project as far as figuring it out. I got a circuit for the, for the zero crossing detection. And um, so I got that working, and um, so I, and I'm just hooking. I'm just um, gonna. I'm, I still need to build the um, solid state relay controller. So okay, cool. so that's 
happening right now. Um, I've also um, been messing around with your um, with your with the um, NFC, NFC stuff, mm -hmm. and um, that's very impressive. You guys did an awesome job. Yeah, Kevin did a great job on that. Yeah. You, were, you worked really hard on K it. K-Town really K -Town. spent a lot of time. We think we got the maximum theoretical distance that you it can use as, for the tag. It's as sensitive as, as it technically can be. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's actually a little. In, it's actually interesting with the reader because it actually causes an interesting problem because because you have a little bit more range than what you're accustomed to. Just getting the card kind of close to it is good enough. Yeah, yeah. and it's it can so be like a, at an angle, and it'll work fine. So it's, right. it's it's quite sensitive. Like I would be like, wait, why is this like going off? Oh wait, the card is like on my desk. Yeah. A couple inches away, but it would actually. I'm, come I'm kind of used to the crummy ones, and you have to like you have rub to, like, it against it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I've worked with some of the um, RFID stuff before, and um, it's come a long way, but it's still like going out there with the NFC, NFC, NFC stuff and the various condition that it's in on different devices and everything, it's it's amazingly complicated. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, you guys did a really good job, even with the, um, the um, sample code and stuff you have out there. I'm actually working on trying to adapt that to actually do true, like a true V-card, right? Oh, cool. Yeah. So, Let's know how that goes. Yeah. We're, we're kind of excited because the NFC in phones, like Apple hasn't put it in the iPhone yet, so you don't see like everything embedded with NFC yet, but there's a lot of Android phones that have it, and we're starting to see like cash register systems pop up. Like There's a Dwayne Reed around the corner here in New York, and you can pay for anything with NFC now. So yeah. it's, it's starting to get embedded out there. What? Is, it, is it actually NFC? Yeah, it's Google yeah, it's Wallet. Yeah, 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 because yeah. it has a Google Wallet logo on it. It's a little bizarre. I'm not expecting it. Okay, that's about that's about it. I have um, I do have a um, EL project that I'm also working on, but okay. I. Oh, but you're gonna I'm, make uh, a Tron die suit. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a combination of EL wire and a quadcopter. Oh, oh that's cool. <laughs> it's blowing. It's slicing my head. <laughs> There's there are certain flight problems though with flying um, quadcopters in the dark. Someone made a really cool battle bot with a. They used the mini pov to say, "I'm coming to get you" with the, on the blades before it destroyed the other robot. Yes, yeah. I thought that was neat. That's very cool. Yeah. All right, okay, we're going to get ready for Ask an Engineer. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Andy. Another fantastic show and tell. Yeah, that, that was, was a, really good. That was a lot of, you know, visiting old projects, new projects. Yeah. That's good. All right, we'll see everybody soon, and Ask an Engineer starts in just a few minutes. Bye-bye.